Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop today on the Plugin Alliance channel, and we are checking out the newest plugin from Plugin Alliance called the Amec Mastering Compressor. This is an emulation of really coveted piece of analog hardware found in some of the top mastering studios in the world. It's a favorite on Mixbus for a lot of mixing engineers, and it's also a favorite on a lot of individual instruments like vocals and drums and other elements. This is a really unique compressor that's almost like three compressors in one. You've probably never seen a compressor that's controlled just like this one, and we're going to go into all the details about how it works and hear it in action today. The original high-end mastering grade compressors that the Amic Mastering Compressor is modeled after are really known for their transparency, but not only for being really transparent, but giving you some incredible control over just how the compressor works. Instead of having a traditional attack and release control, it's almost like having three separate compression detector circuits under the hood of the same compressor. There's one slow compressor in there that's kind of an averaging compressor that's really meant to control the macrodynamics of the track. And in addition to that averaging compressor, there's also a faster compressor detector that's really meant to clamp down a little bit quicker and let go a little bit quicker. And in addition to that, there's one more detector that works on compressing just peak signals, really instantaneous, transient peaks. So you can dial in all three of these compressors to taste. It's a way that a lot of engineers work to begin with, often stacking multiple compressors, say a slower attack compressor plus a faster attack compressor and then maybe a peak limiter. And all three of those modes are available in the Amec Mastering Compressor all at once in a way that's really easy to understand, use, and visualize. We're going to look at the really fun detector readouts here that will give us a really good sense of which one of these detector circuits are being triggered. More on that in a minute. We'll look at it more closely as we go along. Let's dive right into the first controls here on the Amec Mastering Compressor. The most obvious control here to start with is the threshold, and as we turn up the threshold, each of these detector circuits can be hit even more readily. So right now we're triggering the slow detector circuit by bringing down the threshold just a little bit. But you'll see that moving this threshold knob also has another effect. As I bring it up and down, it also does some automatic gain compensation. So turning this threshold down here will turn up our output gain. And the way the meters on this unit work are really cool. It gives you a great sense for just how much you're boosting or decreasing the signal overall. So you'll see as I brought down the threshold, I boosted the output gain automatically. And then as the compressor kicks in, it's pulling the output down from this higher level. You'll see that by default, our slow averaging compressor is the one that is triggering basically all of the compression going on. But we can feed even more of the fast signal or the peak signal into the detector circuit to make them trigger the compressor more. Before we start hearing some audio examples together, let's take a quick peek at what that looks like on the detector meter so you can get a sense of what's going on. If I boost the fast knob and turn down the threshold a little bit, we'll see both the slow detector and the fast detector triggering the compressor. Here we go. Check that out. Now we see it going back and forth between the slow and fast detectors being the main thing triggering the compressor. We can also start to fold in our peak signal, and now the peaks are going to start factoring in here as well. So this gives us a really good visual readout of exactly what parts of our signal are triggering the compressor's detector. The slow average of the signal, a faster average of the signal, or just those instantaneous peaks. By blending these together, you can kind of get the best of all three possible worlds. Instead of stacking together a slower compressor, a faster compressor, and a limiter, you're kind of getting a little bit of each of those types of control right in this one compressor in a super transparent way. Let's go a little deeper and look at some more of the additional controls on here so you understand exactly what's going on. The next thing to look at, I think, is this timing knob. And this kind of controls the timing window for the slow detector circuit. Each of these detectors uses a true RMS detection, which basically kind of mimics the way the human ear actually responds to audio. But when it comes to RMS, when we're measuring the average level of the signal, that's really what RMS means, there's a window for how long of a time are we detecting our averages over. 
And you can set the window for this from anywhere from 70 milliseconds down to 1.2 milliseconds. So if you have a really wide window of 70 milliseconds that we're taking the average level from, that kind of means that we're going to see a really smoothed out, very broadly averaged version of the signal hitting our detector circuit. But if we change this timing window down to 1.2 milliseconds, then all of a sudden this slow compressor starts to act a bit faster. We're using a smaller window to detect our peaks. So that average is going to change more rapidly than if we have a big window where we're going to see a more smoothed out signal. You'll see that with this detector knob all the way to the left, we're getting a really slow, broad average of the signal going into the slow detector circuit. And as I turn it more and more to the right, all of a sudden that slow detector is picking up more and more of the variation in the signal. We're starting to get more peaks being registered in that slow detector circuit. This timing knob is not only affecting our slow detector circuit though, it also has influence on just how fast the fast detector circuit is. So long story short, if you want both the slow and the fast detector to act even more quickly, you can turn this timing knob to the right, and if you want them to act even more slowly, you can turn this timing knob over to the left. Turning up the fast knob controls just how much of the fast signal we're pumping into the threshold. You can see I've turned it up here, and all of a sudden that fast compressor is triggering things a lot more often. And we can do the same thing with our peak knob, turning this up to make sure that we're compressing more and more of the super fast, instantaneous, transient material. Those are really the three main controls that you can play around with here to do most of the heavy lifting on this compressor. Timing, adjusting it to be a little bit more sensitive to averages versus peaks. Fast, feeding more and more of a faster average into the detector circuit and peaks almost acting a little bit like a soft limiter that's just compressing really instantaneous transient material. And blending all three of these together, you can get exactly the kind of control and envelope that you want. There's a few more additional controls on here. Output control, pretty self-explanatory, but the ratio control here is really fun. It goes from a low of one to a high of infinity, working as a brick wall limiter, but you can also put it into a soft mode, which is a little bit more like a program dependent compression with a variable ratio, depending on just how hard we're hitting this compressor. There's also a headroom knob here that will allow you to drive the compressor even harder or back off on it. Turning this knob to the left is going to drive the compressor even harder. We're hitting the threshold harder. We're hitting all the analog emulated circuitry even harder. And turning it to the right is going to drive less signal into this unit. Once you've dialed in exactly how much compression you want, of course, we've also got this handy dandy mix control. So you can go from 100% wet all the way down to 0% or anywhere in between. You also have a variable link control between the left and right or mid and side bands of this compressor. You can have them not be linked at all, have them be linked 100% or anywhere in between. And there's another really cool feature in the sidechain link that I haven't seen on any other compressors. It is this max versus average button. Set to max, the two sides of the compressors will be linked based on the maximum amount of compression across the two channels. So basically, whichever side of the compressor is compressing harder, that's going to decide how much both sides compress. But if you set it to average mode, all of a sudden the compressor will look at the average of the two sides of the compressor. These are two pretty different ways of linking the two sides of the compressor, and it's available both in stereo and mid-side mode. And of course, we can change between stereo and mid-side with these extra controls down here at the bottom changing our left channel to mid and our right channel to side. These two buttons on the left take the compressor in and out of bypass and allow you to turn on or off an external sidechain. But there's some really robust sidechain capabilities inside this compressor that we'll get to in just a minute. But before we get there, there's just one more major control in the top section of this Amic mastering compressor, and that is release hysteresis control. To give you a really technical explanation of exactly how the release hysteresis control works would probably double the length of this video, but to give you the really short version of it, it decides how much the fast compression detector influences the overall release of the compressor. 
Long story short, the more you turn this release hysteresis control to the right, the faster the release on the compressor ends up being. It's a subtle change, but play around with it yourself for a while, and I think you'll come to appreciate the difference between having this knob all the way to the left compared to moving it more and more over to the right, where the release of the compressor is influenced a little bit more by that fast detector circuit. In addition, the ambience button here allows us to hear exactly what the compressor is taking away from the signal, letting us hear the difference between the compressed and uncompressed track. And with that, we've gone through most of the major controls in the Amec Mastering Compressor that make it unique. But there's a few fun bells and whistles down here on the bottom. First, you have this really robust sidechain filter section with a high-pass filter and two bands of EQ, lows and highs that you can use in either bell or shelving mode. There's an auto listen feature that you can tap into on the sidechain, making it even easier to hear exactly what your sidechain EQ is filtering out or accentuating in your signal. This three band, two channel sidechain control is really great for doing mid side compression if you want the sides to respond to different frequencies more or less than the mids, or if you have left and right channels, say you want to compress some annoying high percussion a little bit more on one side of the stereo image than the other, having these two independent sidechain filters are super useful. And down at the bottom, of course, there's some extra bells and whistles that plug and aligns like to throw into so many other tools. You've got input metering, input gain, the TMT functionality, which will model the differences in tolerance that you're going to find from channel to channel in real analog gear. In the center, we've got the mono maker. No mastering grade plugin, in my opinion, is complete without the mono maker and the stereo width control that Plugin Alliance and Brainworks put on so many other tools. You can take this compressor in and out of mid side mode, and you can link or unlink all of the parameters on the compressor. In addition to the output gain and output control, there's also this VCA clip knob, which is making its first appearance in a Plugin Alliance plugin. And it can basically help add a little bit of extra saturation and harmonic distortion to the sound of the device. So you can make this thing super clean and transparent or get just a little bit more grit out of it. We'll listen to it together right now, but the best way to hear this compressor, of course, is to listen to it on your own tracks in your own studio. Go over to plugin-alliance.com where you can try out this or anything else they make for free for two weeks. Or if you are a member of the mega subscription bundle, this is now yet another compressor that's been added to your bundle at no additional charge. But in the meantime, let's hear it in action together. I've got a set of electronic drum and bass stems pulled up here from a new artist named Vice. Just some solid basic rhythm tracks without too much going on in the section so we can really see what's going on in these detector circuits as well as hearing the plugin. I think the visual feedback we get out of this thing is just part of the fun of using it. When I play this track here, we'll be hearing the raw unmastered version of these stems. And when I click over to this test master track, we'll hear it with a little bit of EQ applied, just a touch, and then the Amec mastering compressor in and out. I'll play it unmastered, then with a little bit of EQ and stereo widening I'm adding here with a BX Digital plugin, and then I'll take the compressor out of bypass, just using the mix bus preset built in. And I think you'll hear it sounds pretty good right off the bat without making any additional changes. Here we go. First before. And I think you'll hear the track get a little bit louder as we engage the Amec Mastering Compressor because as we bring this threshold up, we're also bringing up some of the automatic gain compensation. So as we're adding compression, we're also adding a little bit of level to compensate for that, giving us an overall hotter signal on average. So it's able to add a little bit more impact, a little bit more definition, a little bit more heft, even though you can see on the meters that the before and the after are pretty well level matched. Just to prove it to you, I'll bring up the BX limiter on both of these tracks. Here on the left it is for the before, and here on the right we'll have the after. And you can see that they're both hitting the same loudness level, which is a little bit aggressive because of the kind of genre we're dealing with here. Now let's hear it one more time where the only difference between the two is just the compressor, and I'll level match them to the best of my ability here as well. Here we go.
So I think you can hear there's a little bit of extra detail, a little bit of extra richness, even when they're level matched with the only difference being just the compressor on the track. So beautiful sounding compressor for mix bus and mastering applications, but of course you don't have to just use it there. It's great on things like vocals, drums, bass, acoustic guitar, anything where you want a lot of dynamic control, but for that dynamic control to be really beautifully transparent and where you have a lot of ability to adjust just what parts of the signal are being dynamically controlled. Is it more the average? Is it more the peaks? Is it more somewhere a little bit in between? Today I've just given you some rudimentary examples of this compressor in mix bus and mastering context, but if you want to hear some other examples in a whole variety of tracks, including things like vocals, check out Craig Bauer's demonstration video coming out on this same channel. But of course, better yet is to hear it yourself on your own track, so go over to plugin-alliance.com to try it out for free. Let us know what are some of your favorite applications for this kind of compressor down in the comments below. Hope you enjoy it. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for hanging out with me again here on the Plugin Alliance channel. See you next time.